Hello. Beep, beep, beep. Welcome to the court of the EDI Jester. How are we good people? Somebody asked in the comments yesterday, what do my neighbours think about my pig? I, have, I don't know who my neighbours are. <laughs> I have no idea who my neighbours are. I don't speak to anyone. I sort of scurry away if they appear. The only people I speak to are those in lifts. <laughs> it's the strange thing about city centre life. You can live next to people for years, never know who they are. I can smell their cooking though. It smells nice. <laughs> what a strange question. Anyway, never mind all that. Let's get on with it. NHS today. NHS. Oh, it's, it makes you breathe because I, you know, I have more than my fair share of dealings with the National Health Service. So I was in their thrall once again the other day as I pottered off to have the eyeballs tested for potential blindness. Right. That's what we're the testing my eyes these days to see if I'm collapsing from the inside out. And I was there with a nice doctor who said to me, right, sit in the chair. So I sat in the chair and they said, can you see the sign on the wall? I said, yeah. He said, I want you to read the letters out. You know, one of those things. So I did. F-I-R-E-E-X-I. -E he went, not that sign. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was just winding him up. But nice guy, seen him before. Then they, then they, then they said, put some drops in my eyes and said, right, go outside. Go outside and wait 10 minutes. He said, you may find that the wall goes blurry. What? So I go outside and I'm thinking, right, I'll have a look around. And I'm, I'm reading the notice board and gradually the notice board is getting more and more fuzzy and I can't see it. And, and the only thing I end up seeing on the notice board is great big rainbows. With, oh, gender and trans, with all, all that stuff written on it at the NHS in a tiny little sort of enclave of the NHS that deals with people with problems with the old peepers. Right. So, so eventually I get back in there and he does the investigation and looks at it and says, yeah, no, 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 nothing to worry about from what I can see, but we'll send it off for proper analysis. And I said, oh, thanks very much, Doc. I said, you, want, you might want to get those posters down, you know, it's child harm. And he went, what? And I said, the posters. And he, he said, what? He said, we came outside. And I went, look, those. Oh, yes. He said, yeah, they, they do tend to get everywhere. And then turned around and walked away. <laughs> so although the NHS might be, you know, imbibing the throbbing, EDI knowledge, it's not necessarily true that people in the NHS can stand it. I don't, certainly don't think this chap could. So it's interesting to see from Rosie Norman. Oh, come and be a warrior teacher. Subscribe to this, please, and hit notifications. I need more subscribers. Buy me a coffee, usual stuff. But come and be a warrior teacher. That's the most important thing for September. The NHS is still in thrall to the cult of diversity comes from Spiked Online, written by a Rosie Norman. Thank you for this, Rosie. The NHS cult is still in thrall to the cult of diversity. Why is the crisis ridden health service wasting millions on woke initiatives? And this is on September the 4th. So this is not old, this is news. But they're still at it. The NHS is in dire straits. People struggle to get doctor's appointments face unbearable waits for an ambulance and encounter interminable delays for routine operations. Yet, despite the all too palpable crisis in frontline patient care, it seems NHS management is still happy to waste time and money promoting work values to Britain's largest workforce. This has been known for a long time, but it doesn't seem to be that they're getting the hint in any way whatsoever. No wonder, then, is it really to discover that one of the heads of organisational development and culture within the NHS is also... The chair of Pride, Manchester Pride. Sticky fingers, see. According to a job advert published last month, Derbyshire NHS Foundation Trust is looking to recruit a new head of equality, diversity and inclusion at Kingsway Hospital on a generous salary of seventy to 80000 a year. The EDI head will be expected to help Kingsway Hospital realise its strategic ambitions communism and continue to develop the culture of belonging equity and cultural improvement which means excluding people that doesn't go with the narrative so it's right there in the job descriptions the person spec last lest anyone think that 80 grand a year might be better spent on a nurse or a doctor kingsway's edi head will be responsible for providing constructive challenges and speaking truth to power so what they're doing is they're putting a hard left lunatic in the NHS to disrupt the NHS processes because there must be a constant disruption because everything is about power and oppression despite the fact that they're there to treat people. So what they really are doing is attacking the only thing in Britain that exists that runs on the basis of an equality of outcome that we all go home better. <laughs> Don't always achieve it, of course not because people snuff it or they, you know, they're not well but that's what they're doing. It's actually, EDI is actually going to undo the only real socialist state 
in Britain, which wants equality of outcome. So, so it's very interesting to see. So they're going to go in and they're going to upend the whole system. This is what they asked them to do, you see. Um, it says here that they will all be held responsible for constructive challenges and speaking truth to power, which I'm sure will be music to the ears of someone waiting months for a hip replacement. <laughs> Rather good, Rosie. A little bit of wry humour there coming in. The Kingsway, Kingsway job is no one off. Incredible as it may seem, the NH spends, Ash spends an estimated forty million a year on dedicated EDI roles. Forty million. For how many nurses? That's got to be a hospital. Surely you could put up a hospital for forty million, shouldn't you? Could you? There must be some willing firm out there. I'll do it. <laughs> put up a hospital for forty million. It's incredible. These highly paid ideologues busy themselves with tasks such as compiling an A to Z of diversity to instruct staff on how white women can be actionable allies to people of colour, offering training courses on noticing and challenging microaggressions and then organising LGBT themed tea and rainbow cake picnics. It really is lunacy. It really is lunacy. Of course, 40 million is chump change when compared to with the whole of the NHS's 182 billion budget. Scrapping every diversity rule would only claw back enough money to cover two hours of NHS spending per year. I've heard that kind of thing before from union reps, where was, the badges cost 20,000. Yes, all right, 20,000 is a drop in the ocean. You know, when people are funded by the public purse, that's the attitude you get, it's okay, it's not our money. Right, it's not the fact that it would only claw back that amount, the fact is that that amount shouldn't be being spent. That's the problem, isn't it? <sighs> it is absurd for the health service to spend a single penny on diversity initiatives at a time when it is failing to deliver on its basic responsibilities. As of June of this year, a whopping 6.3 million patients are waiting for treatment. Overcrowding in hospitals is so bad that Labour MP Jess Phillips recently described the situation as akin to a war zone. So why are NHS bureaucrats still so hell-bent on pushing identity politics onto their staff, wasting their time and our money in the process? It seems that no matter how poor the provision of healthcare gets, the NHS will always find resources for EDI initiatives. We need to stand up to these warped priorities. And Rosie Norman is an intern at Spikes. Thank you, Rosie, for a great article. I'll share the article so people can see it. Um, really interesting to hear from you on this. It's not just the cost of the twat at the top. The twat at the top, right? It's not just that cost, is it? So let's do it. Let's do it, in, in, you know, in your head. Let's do it, right? So the two out of the top goes, right, here we go. We've got microaggressions are a real problem in the NHS with people using microaggressive facial expressions because that's coming next. So don't frown. Whatever you do, don't frown. They'll put you in front of a judge, right? So microexpression. Are you doing microaggressions with your face? Possibly. Please don't. All right. So they need to train everybody. This is the largest workforce, in, not just in the UK. It's one of the largest workforces in the world. So how many people do you want to train? Well, I think we'll train 120,000. So 120,000 times a day's wages. That's, the, that's where it begins. Are we going to need to do it? Well, we're going to need a bank of trainers. You better get them as well. So external trainers, £300 a day. Oh, we don't have to manage them. So we'll put a company in the middle of that. External trainers, £500 a day. £300 of which goes to the company. £200 to the trainer. And how many days are you going to have to run? Well, we can get to, we can get a maximum of 10 on each course, 20 on each course. So we're going to need to run quite a few days, are we? Right, OK, and how much is that going to cost? No wonder it disrupts. Because then you get doctors, receptionists and you know, anaesthetists who think that there are more than two sexes and that just walking around being white is racism. <laughs> That's what's going on. That's the NHS for you. Tell me some stories. You must have stuff from the NHS about this. Let me know in the comments or... Hit me up on Twitter and tell me. Um, great to hear from you. Uh, sorry, great to speak to you. Go and be a word teacher. I'll see you later. Goodbye. That's enough. Go on. I've had more than enough time. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.